so on Friday, I did my stream, and I said that on my stream, uh, allegations had come out in the form of an audio tape and some chat logs that indicated that Christian Weston Chandler had fucked his mother. And if you don't know, Chris is like 39, Barbara is 79. So very big age difference. And on camera, she always appears very out of it. There had been some discussion that maybe she was faking it, mostly from Marvin um, and Chris. They both claimed that she was more lively off camera for some reason. Uh, but now it's it's pretty hard to try and try and say that she doesn't have some kind of issue because Chris has been arrested since then. So, but uh, th he hadn't been arrested yet on Friday. But I I hear this news and I'm I'm erring on the side of caution because um, shit like this has been said before. People have been saying that Chris fucks his mom since 2008, and I, I'm almost wondering if that has embedded in his brain because he's heard it so much. But even during the Idea Guy stuff, like in 2018, Idea Guy extorted him into making confessional statements that he had raped his mother. And that was not true at the time, I'm sure of it. So even like a couple years ago, like in recent history, there had been these kinds of troll attempts to get Chris to say that he had been having sex with his mother. So I, I err on the side of caution. I say I'm going to wait until Chris gets online and explains what happens. And to my surprise, he gets online and he just says, oh, actually, let me just quote him directly because I have his, his signal up still. And if I need a reference at all, throw it through it. We haven't talked much since Friday. And I stopped talking to him altogether on Saturday. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay. So... I ask him, I give him the, the audio and the, the screenshots of the messages, and I say, um, I need you to tell me if this is real or not. And he says, hey, Josh, well, this is indeed a major shocker of a leak. But firstly, let me state directly with you that I have told this only to one person outside the temple. And I thought the temple was like a name of like some gay trolling clique or whatever. But the temple is what he calls his house. So outside of him, his mom, and his dogs, I guess. And he says, uh, and second, Josh Moon, yes, it is true. The sex was consensual with Barbara. So I'm like, okay, so this is all real then. Uh, that's fucking, wow. I, like, to, like even now, like you say Christian Weston Chandler had sex with his mother. And it doesn't sound like a real statement. It kind of like sounds like bullshit. So it's hard to process. Um, so he does. He says that, like I said, that it was consensual. That um, And this, like even then, it's like, okay, so he had sex with Barb. But Barb, in like the early Chris videos, always had like a weird relationship with Chris. And she, we know for a fact that Chris didn't get along with her for years because she was very like possessive and needy and would force him to like cuddle with her in bed. And if he didn't do that, like she would, she would yell at him for not cuddling with her. So th they always had like a weird relationship. So even at this point I'm thinking like, okay, he fucks his mom. L let us, l let's take this one step at a time and, and figure out what the fuck to do. Cause at this time I still have the GoFundMe and everything uh, to take care of. And I, I don't know what to do with that on Friday. And he says that it's Bella. So my immediate concern just then is like, okay, so now Chris is um, might be arrested. People are going to try to get him arrested because they're going to immediately assume that based on how Barb acts on camera that she has dementia. And they're going to assume that um, that he took advantage of her. And they're going to try to get her, him in jail. So that's that's what we're looking at. And I tell him basically what his rights are as an American citizen. I tell him what the process is that he might get arrested that they might, social services might come by and take her, told him, like, what his rights are, that he can request an attorney, he can remain silent, that kind of stuff. In retrospect, I'm sure at this point I'm just wasting my fucking time because I learned, I have a, I have a big revelation later on that I'll get to, but that's my initial reaction. Um, and then to my surprise, and uh, well, Actually, I didn't know what to expect, really. But a couple hours later, after he confirms that the police had been by, he says that he gets a emergency protective order from the Greene County Sheriff's Department. And what has happened is that he has been removed from the house. He's no longer allowed within 300 feet of the property, and he's not within 300 feet of Barbara. And Barbara has been taken to the hospital to be inspected for, um, for any kind of, like, abuse. 
So he's he's in his car and he doesn't know what to do. And he quickly arranges with people that he's going to go ahead and arrange living situations with someone, uh, his like an aunt and uncle, I'm pretty sure. And I think they live in Richmond. So uh, I think that's sorted out. He's going to stay there until August 5th, which is when the EPO ends, and he's going to go to Richmond. So he hightails it to Richmond. I tell people that it's true. And at this point, I'm concerned, like, okay, I don't want to be called in. I don't want to be subpoenaed as a, as a witness against Chris. So I'm going to try and say as little as possible. Uh, and w then, but later that night, he gets there, and there's a police officer in Richmond at the property of his aunt and uncle who is there to tell him that he's not welcome on the property. So at some point, um, they, they either he misunderstood them when they said that he could come over, or they had heard about what he was arrested for, or something to that effect, and they rescinded their invitation that she could... Um, she could well, she, sorry, uh, uh, I'm mixing up people in my head right now because the fucking sun is in my eye. Give me a sec. Anyways, he gets there and the police are like, you can't come on the property. So now Chris is in Richmond and he doesn't know what to do. And he texts me and he says that they told me that I can't come over. And I'm like, okay, well, you have to get a hotel, right? And he says, well, I don't have any money. So it's like, okay. And sure enough, Chris has negative $200 in his bank account because, uh, let me actually I happen to know what his last purchases were um I don't think many people know this because I don't think I've told many people uh Chris has been buying sex toys like a lot this year um because he, he gave me access to his email and he just doesn't give a fuck so he's like on adamandeve.com buying sex toys and shit and then he's he bought like a custom print of like Sonichu playing cards and then he bought like latex, like costume apparel. By the way, I, I got a receipt today saying that they had shipped his latex costume for the BronyCon. So he spent like hundreds of dollars he didn't even have on apparel and collectibles and handmade shit and like sex toys and, and like ladies lingerie and all this shit. So now he doesn't have money for a hotel. And I'm like, okay. This is now a certified Class A emergency. I will disperse you all your fucking GoFundMe money to, to tide you over for this event. Because you're definitely not going to BronyCon anymore. So I, I try to I um, use Zelle, and I, I am going to send him $1,000. But the problem is, is that it takes, depending on what day you send it on, depending on if the recipient is a person that you've sent money to before, it takes a while. So I tell him, Chris... You're going to have to sleep in the car tonight. You're going to have to sleep in the car. He, when he planned to go to the Brony convention, he intended to sleep in the car on the way there. And I said, Chris, you're going to have to sleep in the car tonight. So find a nice place, a quiet place, and in a park or something, in, in a uh, parking lot, and sleep there under the stars. And consider your actions. Consider that you have taken these actions, and now you've fucked everything up beyond all comprehension, and you might be going to jail. Just spend one night under the stars to think about this. And he says, okay, I will do that. So that is Friday. Friday is now over, at least for me. I'm, I'm, I'm recounting this by my time. But actually, it's not even over because I'm laying in bed, right? And, I'm, and I can't sleep because I'm currently in, at some stage of grief. <laughs> I'm going through personal tribulation at this time. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like, uh, you know, this is fucked up. And then I get more messages from Chris and, uh, he's telling me that Bella, who is the person who's in, in the call where Chris is disclosing that he fucked his mother. And I've not, I've still not listened to the call, but as people are like, initially people were having some doubt about if Bella was, or if I was responsible for this. And I'm thinking, like, you know, I'm, I I didn't listen to the call, but at any point, does, like, Bella say, don't have sex with your mother? And apparently at no point in this call does Bella say, don't have sex with your mother. That's a bad thing to do. So uh, the, I'll get into that later. I'm not going to go deep into the whole Bella shit right now. Um, that is That needs to be processed further before... Um, I can commit to that, but in general, the calls out there and the call is fucking weird and I did not listen to it. I don't have the stomach for it. Uh, but Bella is not telling Chris not to have sex with his mother. 
Uh, but Bella tells Chris that, oh, Chris, it's a misunderstanding. I was hacked and the trolls got my audio from my phone. And Chris says, I sorted it out with Bella and she explained to me that the trolls hacked her phone and got the audio and it's not her fault. And I'm laying there at 3 a.m. in my bed. I'm fucking exhausted. I'm just like, this guy has learned not a single fucking thing in 15 years he hasn't learned a single thing ever and i'm just like okay and i'm not i'm not even like okay i'll tell you what i said to him let me let's scroll up um bella also known as 10th anonymous on instagram as part of caden's group and she recently joined wildcat and i other cowcasts that have proven to be toxic or bad um i explained that Bella was a troll, and the first time he showed me Bella's profile on Instagram, I told him it was a troll. Um, and I say uh, that she's just fucking with you. Where the fuck? Oh, he's talking about the mall. He's talking about how he wants to go to the mall and shit at this point. I'm still waiting for... Oh... By the way, Bella has stepped forward and she has figured out who caused the leak. She also talked it out with Wildcat. And by the way, Wildcat made a video with a some random fucking audio conversation he had with Chris. And at the end, he just says, Noel, Noel convinced Chris to have sex with his mother. I know because I'm a troll. And then by the now he's asking me to make sure that we don't allow a threat on him because he didn't have anything to do with Bella. He's begging me not to get docs on the fucking forum while he's actively trying to like promote fucking splinter sites and say that I caused Chris to fuck his mother. I will I will absolutely allow that guy to get whatever shit's coming his fucking way. And so he comes back and he says that Bella and Wildcat made up and Wildcat psychic espion on the forum is Wildcat and Wildcat uh, verified that Bella is telling the truth and shit. And I say, anyways, I'll see, or he says, anyways, I'll see you later. Bella wasn't the cause of the leak. And I said, Bella caused the leak. How don't you get this? I, I don't understand. She's the only one who had it. It's her voice. How do you not understand? And Chris says, I get the possibility, but she has stepped forward with her side and it's worth looking into. And I just say, bro, all these people are fucking with you. Your Twitter friends, Bella, the Discord people, these are all people trying to fuck with you for internet fame. You're talking to someone who is trying to get you put into prison for years. They will haul you away in handcuffs. I don't understand how you can fall for the same tricks again you first saw 10 years ago. And he says, I'm not falling for trickery. I said, you confess to a crime to a person who has now gotten you kicked out of your home and you may have criminal charges coming, but you're still talking to them like they're not obviously fucking with you. How do you rationalize this? His response is this. I am spiritually guided and I am of sound mind. And I say to him, you have to cut this shit out now. You had sex with your mom and are now sleeping in a van because you cannot afford a hotel room. The government is looking to take your mom and put her in a senior care home where you will not be allowed to see her. They may charge you with crimes like rape, which could allow put, which could result in you being put in prison or a mental ward. If they put you in a hospital, they will force you to take medication that will make you a zombie. You are not a god. You are not spiritually guided, and these people are not your friends. You're ignoring my good advice because you prefer the trolls who enjoy treating you like a god, and those people want you in jail. Your spiritual guidance got you to have sex with your mom and be kicked out of your home. My advice got you $5,000. If this isn't a wake-up call, nothing ever will be able to wake you up. And he says, I am waking you up. I hear you loud and clear. And I say, I'm not the person you have to convince. Just telling me you don't, you understand does not work when you immediately start doing things that hurt you, like trusting Bella or talking, talking to Dylan on Twitter. I really don't think you will ever get it. It's probably too late now anyways. And uh, my Dylan is someone on Twitter who he immediately, like I told him, don't talk to anyone. Don't talk to anyone. How fucking hard is this? Don't talk to anyone. You are <laughs> They're going to put you in fucking jail. Do you not understand this? And he goes on Twitter because some verified blue check mark, my little pony animator on fucking YouTube says like, hey, Chris, did you have sex with your mom? And he's thinking like, oh boy, a person I recognize from YouTube. Why, yes, sir, I did have sex with my mom. And it's like, are you fucking retarded? And it's like, yes, the answer is yes. I have to come to terms with the fact that Chris was fucking retarded. He's always been fucking retarded. And now, on top of everything, on top of learning that he can't learn, I have to realize that um, he's malicious. He, he knows that doing these things are wrong, and he doesn't care. Because if he gets away with it, that's all that matters. And I realize that, and I'll take a detour now to show you this. 
Chris told me earlier this month that he had a girlfriend. I'm thinking, okay, that's fucking weird. And he says, like, nope, nope, it's totally real girlfriend. And, um, you know, I, I met her in person and we've had sex and all this other stuff. I'm thinking, like, okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> Good for you. I'm glad. I'm happy for you, bro. So he says, okay. Now, I have a major update to share with you, strictly confidential. The past week up to the Sunday the 27th has been a major game changer uh, for the positive with me. I tell you this in strictest confidence, and I trust. I do not want a word of this on the Kiwi or going public. But I had sex with someone last week, someone of this half of our universe. I worked thoroughly and compassionately with her beforehand and at present. She's physically older than I. If heard, one may say that she's something out of an anime or fan fiction, but yeah, keeping her safe as well. Also, next appointment with my doctor is on the 20th, so I'll get checked in. To be safe, condoms are being used in the intercourse. This relationship was something I have extensively given much, much deep thought and within myself. I had foreseen this among the infinite possible outcomes long ago. I no longer believe in the... This is the the part in, in retrospect, which is like... Uh, I no longer believe in labels that would hinder, and I do not listen to those shadows. This was one of my own choice and of acceptance, and I have no regrets. This feels right and good with her and I. And I asked, really, how'd you meet? She's, and he says, well, I've met her a while ago and was not fully aware at the time, and my allied deities guided me to seek her out and make things go further with great effort we talked off and on during the time in person behind a considerable camouflage she was but she was honest in her emotions and she wanted to be with me as well mutual feelings on good report this relationship has been from the start offline and in person i assure you and i say oh do you have any per pictures of this girl or of you and this girl by the way and he says whoa pressing hard for details i do have photos of my lady friends uh, but it would be too personal at this time. I did mention she was older than I. She's in the th over 50s. So at this point, I'm thinking like, okay. So we met like a 50-year-old like autistic woman in like some sort of weird s situation. And, uh, and they hit it off because they're both like, you know, over the hill and like reprobates and whatever the fuck. And, the, and they're like, okay, whatever, fine, good, <laughs> happy for you, bro. She definitely does not want to spread around, understandable, as one of my more curious followers may have gone through my Amazon by now. I have even recently purchased an informative book to add additional guidance. And this thing is something that definitely means something different uh, when you read it the first time and when you read it fucking now. This book, um, The Ultimate Guide to Sex and Disability for All of Those Who Live with Disabilities, Chronic Pain, and Illness. Um, I read this, I'm thinking like, oh, so Chris read a guide for like how to have sex as like a retarded person. Great, wonderful, you know, knowledge is power, Chris. But now in retrospect, it's uh, how to have sex with someone who is disabled. So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, thank you to Miriam Kaufman, Corey Silverberg, and Fran Odette, by the way, for this wonderful how-to guide on how to have sex with retarded people. Uh, so I say in reply... I'm not trying to press, just curious. It's good you're both into things like anime. And I, I assume that they're into anime because he says that she's like a person from an anime. So I'm thinking like, oh, so she's like a Spurg, like Mei, who acts like an anime character. And he says, no, no, actually, she doesn't watch much anime or animated series or even television these days, for that matter. Adam West was one of her good favorite people back in the 60s, however, as it was for her son back then. So this is the one that really threw me for a loop even then. I'm thinking like, OK, number one, Adam West is like 60s, right? Isn't he like the 1960s guy? So my grandma likes Adam West. So that's weird. And then he says that she has a kid. It's like, how does a retarded woman have like a, a son back in the 60s? So I, I just I just let it glance off, let it wash over, like whatever. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I hope it, that's cool. I hope it works out right. Uh, and he says that well, it is smiley face. I have found great appreciation for her in reading her deeply, and in listening to her stories and life adventures. Her high school days were quite fun for her and intellectual. She is work 
a lot of a lot in numbers and accounting. That's also weird. Like a, a very dysfunctional autistic woman would not have jobs, would not have kids. But so I'm I'm kind of like, eh. but I just assume it's it's like a troll thing. I really don't think that he's like met up and had sex with anyone, or is just with a prostitute. Maybe she was a, a pros an accountant before be, she got addicted to heroin. And is now a crack whore in her 50s. Like, maybe that's it. That, that would work. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, also, you may know what I told you of my lady friend so far and in the future. I kindly want you to... This is the part that may, made me, in retrospect, kind of hate Chris. Because he says, I kindly I kind want you to figure it out for yourself. Uh, thanks, Chris. I figured it out. <laughs> what a mystery. Uh, it's, it's, it, what a twist. It's like fucking uh, Fight Club at the end. I'm sitting back thinking, like, oh, yeah, you could replace t uh, Tyler Jordan with an 80-year-old woman. It would still make sense. <laughs> what, what wonderful writing for this season. <laughs> um, and and all, as also the few others I've confided strictly with this detail, Don Lachome and Wildcat are the two others who have additional clues as well. And I mentioned this to my doctor as well, without mentioning her by name directly at all in any event. I will see my doctor on the 20th, so I will get tested to confirm lack of STDs then. She and I have our romps in the sack every three nights at present. This makes me sound like a prostitute, too. Uh, it does give her something to look forward to. She is very grateful, and I am also appreciative in being able to enlighten her with sex plays she missed out from even her exes. And I say, you should definitely not tell anyone who she is. It can only complicate the relationship. If people start harassing her, he says, obviously, it's a good sign you kept it secret so far, but don't take a risk. He says, yes, shush. We are safe as long as this... Even the obscure details get leaked to the public view or on Kiwi. And I say, good idea. I'd advise you not telling people you trust that even people you trust that you have a girlfriend at this point. And he says, I'm not telling anyone else after you. I do promise. And then I looked it up just out of curiosity. And sure enough, Barbara graduated college with a major in accounting. So there is no point, uh, no, no doubt whatsoever that he is definitely talking about his fucking mother at this point in time. Uh, wolf indeed. Anyways, it continues, ladies and gentlemen, it continues. I was talking to Chris. I was telling him um, that he really fucked up. And I, I, t I tell him that he should take a day, sleep in the car, and I will figure out something tomorrow. So even at this point, I'm still... Like, I think that he needs to go into a home at this point, but I'm thinking, like, um, I'll I'll help him get there until, like, I, like, I don't want him on the fucking street until he gets picked up. So, uh, the next morning, and I, I didn't think about the girlfriend stuff until after, so I'm not, like, angry at him at this point. Uh, I, I checked the email, and again, I have access to his email, and I noticed that he has a recent email from before that conversation where I tell him that uh, he should sleep. Well, actually, after the conversation where I tell him I should sleep in the car, he should sleep in the car. But before he tells me about Bella, I noticed that there was an email sent while I was in bed that Barbara Chandler had sent him $750. And I asked Chris, and let me uh, fast forward to that. I said, did you ask your mom to send you money? That is probably a violation of the EPO. He says, I did not ask her to send me money. I re have refrained from contacting her at all and continue to do so. So I follow up and I ask. So she sent you money on her own. And he says, she did not send me any money. I managed to find blessings in the minimum abundance I needed. Meanwhile, I presently have a little over five hours to kill and both the favorite favorite malls around here ctc and regacy uh regency square don't open until 11 so i sent him a picture of the receipt saying barbara chandler sent you 750 dollars and i said do you have control over her bank accounts and he says yes i have online control and this was an emergency i planned on sending the 750 dollars back to her account after the 1000 dollars gets into my account so he couldn't spend even one day in his car after he has been evicted from his fucking home. 
He violates his EPO within 20, with not even within 24 hours, like within six hours of, of receiving it, he violates it. After I explained to him what to do, just word for word, here's what you do. You don't fucking steal her money. So um, <clears throat> I look at the EPO, and it very specifically says that not only are you not to have any kind of social contact with her, you are to refrain from uh, doing any kind of property theft, which I assume includes uh, wiring money from her fucking bank account without her permission, and you can't ask for her fucking permission because you can't fucking talk to her. So I just block him at that point, and I send the email to the police, and I say, look, you violated his EPO, fuck this, because uh, he lied to me. He lied to me then in that conversation. He said that he found it. He, he let me let me requote that again. Meanwhile, oh, I managed to find blessings in the minimum abundance I needed. You managed to find $750 in your mom's fucking bank account and you wired it to yourself. That's not a blessing. That's not a, a work of God. You fucking stole from her. <laughs> and he knows this because I know he knows when it's wrong to do stuff because he, he doesn't tell me when he when he fucks his mom. He hides that because he knows it's wrong and would cause problems. He doesn't tell me he stole from her because he knows it's wrong and would cause problems. But he thinks he can get away with it if he can just lie well right now. So it's not like a, a retard problem. Like him thinking he can actually get away with it is the retard problem. Uh, him Him lying is something that he does consciously. So... Um, that's, that's the end of my contact with them. And I send to the police, I block him on signal and I cancel the wire of a thousand dollars to Chris. So now he's really fucked, uh, cause he can't pay it back. So there's no way that he can like replace the money in time or whatever the fuck. And then by the way, I checked the balance over time. And by the time he's arrested, he spent all of it. All that money is gone. He's got like a dollar thirty-eight in his account by the time he's arrested, because they send low balance notices as well. So he like he spent a couple hundred dollars on the hotel reservation. He had um, two hundred dollars in the red already, and then he had like a hundred and fifty dollars left over, and he spent that within like a day. So he went to the fucking mall and he bought whatever the fuck he was going to buy, and he was out of shit within the very first day of having the money, just gone. Money that he stole from his mother. While, while evicted from his house from for for fucking her, <laughs> you know? it's like how do you do this? How do you manage to fuck up this bad? Um. So I'm still in contact, by the way, uh, with GoFundMe. I've already received all the money from the GoFundMe, and I um am talking to like their withdrawal people to try and figure out how to give them their money back so that they can automate refunding everyone who donated to the GoFundMe. Uh, he got a, a notice that he was not allowed at BronyCon anymore because he fucked his mother. Uh, they kicked him out of the BronyCon. So, actually, you know what? That'll be funny. Let me read that. I have his email over here <clears throat> from someone named Simul Simul who has a pony face as like his avatar. Your EF Northwest 2021 registration has been revoked. Dear Christine, Everfree Northwest prides itself on providing a fun, vibrant, and above all, safe environment for our, for our attendees. We strive to ensure that every attendee feels comfortable and at ease during their time at our convention. To help ensure a positive and safe environment, we require all attendees to abide by our convention policies, which may be found here. Additionally, the organizers of the event may, at their discretion, take action to enforce these policies to ensure the comfort and safety of all attendees up to and including the revocation of convention badges and removal from the event space. Due to the recent events which have come to light, my follow con fellow convention organizers and I have determined that your presence at the convention would contribute to a sense of unease, discomfort, and insecurity for a sizable portion of our community. Being that these events are... Effects are detrimental to the environment we wish to foster at our event. We have chosen to revoke your registration for Everfree Northwest, effective immediately. This means that you will be removed from our registration list and will not receive a badge. You will not be welcome in any convention space. And uh, they refunded him. That's nice of him. From uh, Simula. He has a weird name. He's a brony, and he says, get the fuck out. So Chris sends me that um, before I, I blocked him. And I thought, okay, well, now I have no reason not to refund the GoFundMe because Chris fucked his mom and he's not going to Everfree Northwest. So there is no, there is no purpose to this fundraiser at this point.